Okay, so this is part two um, of the problem I started on online, and so so it, it has to do with this uh, slide at the fair. Um, I think I figured out what the problem was with my my last calculation, but I'm not going to say what. Um, so this question says, uh, "Here's your slide," and I'm going to model it as being straight, even though it's not. And then it has some level part like that. And so the question is, um, how long should that be? Uh, so you need the data from the first part, and and I said 32 meters per second, and and that's questionable. So let's just use something I got from the video. I actually found that the initial velocity was around 7 meters per second. So let me use that. Okay. Um, and so the question is how far should you, should you design this such that people will stop and not crash off into the, the ground, which could be anything like uh, asphalt or something. Okay, so I'm going to do this with a, as a kinematics problem, a force and acceleration problem. Um, it could be done as work energy. But again, let's just do what we did before. First, we need to choose our x and y axis. Uh, if I have the slider on this part, then they will be moving that way and accelerating this way. So it will be all in the x direction, and that's good. Uh, free body diagram, here's the slider. And then we have uh, the gravitational force. We have uh, the normal force. And then we have the frictional force. Uh, so it's very similar to the previous problem. Um, we'll use the same model for friction, that the magnitude of the friction force is some coefficient, which I found before, UK was about 0.31 uh, times the normal force. So in the vertical direction, in the y direction, there's no acceleration, so F net y equals zero is n minus mg. Okay, so in that case, now these are the y components of the forces, that's why there's a negative sign on the minus mg. Uh, and so here you can see that n does equal mg. So that's um, a little bit different. So now I can find the friction force, the magnitude of the friction force, is going to be um, UK mg. And then in the x direction, F net x equals mAx. Calling that my positive x direction. So it's going to be mAx equals negative mu k mg. And, and the negative sign here, if you look, that's my positive x direction. So that's pointing in the negative x direction. I need that negative sign there. And the mass is canceled. Okay, so I have the acceleration, which I also actually is weird because I actually used this. I measured the acceleration to get the coefficient of friction in the post. So I didn't really have to do that. I could have just started with the acceleration. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so now how long does it need to be? Um, well, if you want to use kinematic equations, you could start with this. V final squared equals V initial squared uh, plus 2A X minus X naught. I, I could use that. And then I could just solve for X, X minus X naught is going to be the distance S and just solve for that. I think I have a little bit of time, then I would like to use not use that equation because no one really knows where that We'll forget where that comes from. Um, so let's just do this with basic things. Let's say um, acceleration is a change in velocity, and this is just all in the x direction. So I'm going to leave off, really, this should be ax vx over delta t. And also I can say vx average is delta x over delta t. I can also say vx average is going to be v final, which I'll just call v, plus v initial over 2. That's the definition of, of average. And actually, that only works if the velocity is changing 
at a constant rate. So you can't always say that. But that would be true if your acceleration is constant. Okay, so right here, um, I want to find um, x, delta x, which in this case is just s. Okay, but I don't know delta t. But I do know, I do know delta t from up here. So I can say delta t equals, um, I'll just write this as v minus v naught over ax. And so putting that together with this, I'll say s over v minus v naught ax, right, because I divide by that, equals v plus v naught over 2. And now I want to solve for s. I'll multiply both sides by v minus v naught over ax, and I get s equals v plus v naught, v minus v naught over 2 ax. And this is a, when I have v plus v naught times v minus v naught, I get v squared minus v naught squared over 2 ax, which is, if I solve this for s, I get the same thing. Okay, so it's the same thing. So now we can just put in our values. Um, my final velocity is going to be 0. I want them to stop. My initial velocity, I'll use a 7. And the acceleration is, is this value right here, negative. OK, so let me put that in. So 0 minus initial velocity squared, 7 meters per second quantity squared, over um, 2, negative 2 times ax, which is uh, 0.31 times 9.8, let's just write it as meters per second squared, it's the same thing. And now let's just first check the units. On the top I have meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second squared. The second squared is canceled and one of the meters canceled, I do get meters. And so I get, uh, and the, it's going to be a positive number too because these are going to cancel. Let me just put this in my handy dandy calculator here, one second. Okay, so I have 7 squared over two times 0 0.31 times 9.8, yep. and I get 8 meters. That seems a little high, too. Wow, that's two fails for me in a row, huh? Eight meters. Well, 24. I guess, I guess that's not too bad. Eight meters isn't completely unreasonable. If you look at those tracks, I mean, they're they're pretty long, the level part. So, uh, and in fact, I saw people going over the end. I saw them sliding and even come off the end. So, I, I don't think that's too unrealistic, and, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Are you okay? Let's all be okay with that. Okay.